Hello, Blitzy. Nietzsche here with a, uh, a geekery quick take. So today I uh, had a conversation with a coworker who's also a D&D nerd, and he introduced me to the concept of the coffee lock or the coffee warlock or the warlock who never takes long rests. Uh, and so this is a sneaky trick that somebody came up with uh, where you have a level two warlock and a, who, who multi-classes into a level two sorcerer or either way. Their warlock has spell slots. They use their sorcerer's flexible casting to convert those spell slots into uh, sorcery points and then convert those sorcery points into additional spell slots. And then the warlock... Uh, regains all of their spell slots at the end of a uh, short rest and they just rinse and repeat and they just do that over and over and over again. Uh, and this particular player uh, uh, was very pleased with the idea that over a, of a, over, over a long uh, extended period of downtime he had built up something like 20, 30 second level spell slots. Uh, and the his contention was that this was legal rules as written. Uh, so I went and I looked it up. And uh, now obviously this sounds broken, right? And how could you possibly have 20 some odd spell slots? Surely this is not legal. Uh, and it turns out it isn't. And I'll get to that in a second. But more importantly, what strikes me about this is it's what I would consider a... a bad faith move on the part of a player and I don't I don't say this to be accusing my coworker I don't want this to be like a call out video but it's more of a psychological thing if you are trying to come up with ways to break the game uh, it is my contention that you're you're playing it wrong you know the point of D&D is to have exciting adventures with your friends it's not to like be you versus the DM or or something like that. If if you're looking for ways to use these loopholes to have crazy advantages, uh, I think you need to rethink your approach to the game. Uh, so you know why would you be doing this? You know does does the DM throw you against stuff that's so ridiculously powerful that you feel like you need to do these these uh, cheesy builds to survive? Or is it just, you know, you think it's like fun to break the game or whatever? However, however it works, if somebody brought this to me without, without looking up and figuring out why it's illegal, if somebody brought this to me, I would be very sort of concerned and I would stop and stop the game and say, okay, why, why would you do this? Like, what, what are you getting out of doing this? Um, the reason I want to put that first is because if you're going to have a rules argument over something like this, that's something where everybody loses. Even if you decide one person is right or wrong or correct or incorrect, uh, 5e especially, the rules are so wibbly wobbly that there will always be a counter, there will always be a yes but, ah but also uh, kind of response. So So let's look at this. So the first thing is, uh, this is based on the rule on the wording that's in the original player's handbook about the uh, uh, sorcerer's flexible casting. That has been errated. Uh, there has been a patch put on that particular hole, uh, which says any spell slot you create with your flexible casting creature vanishes when you finish a long rest. So that right there uh, stops normal play. From doing this uh, because at the end of a long rest all of that stuff goes poof and even if you do somehow cheese it to have a few extra slots during the course of your day at the end of the day they're gone they don't build up over a long uh, journey now now the the this has been discussed on forums and somebody always comes back with well what you do is you never take a long rest and then you know someone else says well then you start uh, suffering exhaustion, as described in Xanathar's book. And then somebody else says, well, we have the cleric in the party cast greater restoration on us every day, right? 
Um, if you've got if you've got a Clara Cook and cast greater restoration is willing to spend the material components on it, why are you wasting time with a trick like this anyway? But all that aside, then you get to the the language on long rests. I don't I don't think you cannot in, you can in good faith say I just never take a long rest. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. First off, how do you prevent yourself from having a long rest? The a long rest is not something your character knows that they're doing. A long rest is just something that happens uh, during the course of your activities or lack of activities. You, you don't get to decide whether there's a rest or not. The dungeon master decides if there's a rest or not. Now you could, uh, you could, I suppose, make a point of getting up every hour and a half and running around the building for 20 minutes and then going back to sleep. Uh, at which point, uh, the DM is probably just going to look at you like, what even are you doing? Why would you do this? You know, and, and I suppose it might explain the, the habits of, uh, eccentric millionaires. Who knows? Let me read you what it says about rest. This is in the original player's handbook, the, my, my first edition of the player's handbook. It says, a long rest is a period of extended downtime, at least eight hours long, during which a character sleeps or performs light activity, reading, talking, eating, or standing watch for no more than two hours. Uh, if the rest is interrupted by a period of strenuous activity, at least one hour of walking, fighting, casting spells, or similar adventuring activity, the characters must begin the rest again to gain any benefit from it. So, if you stop what you're doing and just hang out, right, you will automatically accrue a long rest. Now, you only get the benefits once per day, but that literally means that you cannot go for an eight-hour period in which you don't engage in some strenuous activity, you know. So if I were the DM, I'd be like, no, at some point you just collapse. Your body will fall over. That's just not how living mortal beings operate. So, but again, when we get back, when we look at this, this is a, a thing where you, you got to come to the player and say, why, why would you want to do this? I mean, it doesn't make sense in the fiction of the world, besides being just uh, very dodgy rules wise. Uh, so I'd like to hear what you have, any thoughts you might have about this Blitzy, because uh, I don't think any of our, I don't think anybody in our group would be interested in doing a thing like this um but i'm curious you know how how you would react if somebody brought you this idea of the coffee lock so uh let me hear what you think and uh i will see you next time <laughs>